Okay guys, we're going to take a look at Dash. It's an incredibly busy day, so I'm going to try to keep this one actually short, okay? Um, Dash didn't even have any, it wasn't even close to having my attention or curiosity until, until this breakout occurred, right? Which is the first wave of the third wave. And I do firmly believe that the next wave is going to break out very soon. And we can have some major, major gains. So let's take a look at this, guys. I'm going to draw out some lines here for you guys, first of all. This here is what I would call an expanding triangle. An expanding triangle can have very weird shapes, but they're very, very profitable to play. And let me show you guys a bunch of trend lines, first of all, that we're going to draw. I feel great. I just had a gigantic burger. It was so good. If you guys saw from my EOS video, it was such a nice burger. I've been craving a hamburger. You guys have no idea how long. And I'm not talking about like the McDonald's one, you know, like a real hamburger for a while. And that definitely nailed it. And I feel like I gained, I'm Asian, you know, so we don't gain a lot of weight. Most of it goes into our math calculations and into our bad driving skills. But I do think that I gained some weight after this hamburger. It was just so good, guys. So I'm going to take my date range right over here. I'm going to use this right here as the exact same gauge for right around here, guys, for the exact same gauge. And my target is around, geez, it's pretty high, actually. It's almost $700. Yeah, that's where my next target pretty much is. <laughs> okay, let me show you guys um, some examples, right? I'm, I'm going to relate to this one a lot because it's a, just a really good example in general. And I know that you guys have seen it many times before, probably, but I will do it again. Okay, so this here is a symmetric triangle, right? And it's it's I haven't really seen bad coins break out to the negative side in a long time. Like I've seen it once in a while, maybe based on bad news, but whenever there is good news and it's in a very bullish market, I just don't see it breaking out, guys, to the negative side, right? So we have to assume the positive always and stick to our stop loss. And I firmly believe that 2018 is the year of cryptocurrency. We're going to see some massive surges in the market. And I think there's going to be a lot of money to be made. Late 2017, basically right now, is the time of consolidation. And if we look at any coin, just to give you guys a rough example first, okay? I'll look at Omizi Go here. So let's go to the daily chart for Omizi Go. If we go to a daily chart of Omizi Go, we see kind of these patterns that, that break out to the upside, right? All of them are breaking out to the upside. We look at Litecoin, for example. And when we see Litecoin here on Bitfinex, um, you know, they're all breaking out. They're all breaking out of its pattern and they're going up to the upside. I had a really good suggestion for people to buy between $56 and $58, and Litecoin is doing really well right now. If you guys look at Ripple, that's actually one of my new coins that I'm really looking at. Um, I made a really big play a few days ago on November 10. I suggested that people buy, buy Ripple, right? I suggested right here to buy Ripple, and that's what we did, guys. So Ripple is probably going to hover inside of this triangle for a little bit. Maybe to the end here, that's where we'll start squeezing. I'm very tempted to actually short it there as well right now. Um, just to give you guys an example, you know, th these are these are the kind of coins that are, are gaining a lot of ground right now after they break out of their pattern. So, for example, this guy right here, okay? I'm going to take the base range of this wedge, as I always do, as a general guideline and a target on the four-hour frame, though, just so I can make it more accurate. There we go. Make sure to include all the points as best as you can whenever you're drawing these. They're very important to get some, some more precise um, targets. So I'm going to take it right in between my 55 EMA there. Make sure I just barely touch it right there. Drag it to the point of the breakout right around here. I might have drawn that a little bit off. A little bit too big, I'd say. Perfect. Right to the breakout point. Draw a horizontal line across it. And you guys will see it kind of just hover right around there, right? See how accurate that is? It didn't quite touch it, but it uses it as a really good gauge for where the baseline is, right? And it, it barely, barely, barely touched it. Now, if you look at this scenario as well, right here, that's a really good scenario, I would say. 
get the highest point always. Include it as best as you can inside of it. I apologize if my humor is um, not all here today. It's been a very long day already and there's just lots and lots of positions of mine to manage throughout the day sometimes. So you guys will get a taste of my humor here and there always. Although, like everybody, right? They're not always um, the same every single day in terms of energy and enthusiasm. So if you guys notice here, we're, we're reaching a critical point there that acted as a resistance. So that's just an example of how EOS as well is looking. And let's now look at Dash. I'm going to look at it on Bitfinex. Let's go to a one day chart. So here, this is um, basically it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go like this. That's one. This is two pretty much. This is three, right? Four, and it's, you know, five is going to be, the fifth touch is going to be somewhere well, 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 well up here over here. Um, I'm guessing around right here, actually, believe it or not. I'm guessing around, you know what, let's do a more conservative approach. Let's try to get a similar angle, whatever angle this guy is at. This one's 48. Hmm. No, I don't want to do that. Actually, I want to just use the same baseline for the date. Yeah. So I, I'd probably say around $682-ish. That's a pretty rough guideline. And we can also extrapolate some more data right away. Crazy. Yeah, that's pretty good to me right there. Now let's count the Elliott waves together. So because this is in an expanding diagonal or expanding triangle, however you would like to call it, we're also going to assume that the first few waves are also going to be in a leading type of diagonal, all right? So I'm going to call this one basically one, two, three, and overlap is okay in these types of scenarios because of the way the triangle is. Now, what we will notice is probably a big resistance line. Yes, we do. Right here. That's a big resistance line. That's where normally five would have ended, but it ended up making a huge extended fifth wave, which is beautiful. And if you guys notice as well that this is like a leading diagonal within an expanding diagonal shape as well. So the five wave substructure inside of this particular third wave right there is also in the overall shape of the entire pattern, right? And that's what we can normally assume as well, that we're going to get an ex these are These patterns are amazing to play. They are honestly one of the best patterns that you can play. And um, I really regret not, not noticing it. Um, this was only a few days ago, guys. On November 2nd, like not a few, but about two weeks ago, where this was just, whoo, geez, so profitable. I mean, if I got in on that, that would have made a lot of money. I would have put in like 50, 60 grand in it. I would have made, I would have doubled, holy crap, I missed out on a huge opportunity to double my money. I mean, <clears throat> digest that for a second, guys. Digest what I'm saying for a second, okay? That if you had put in your money on Dash on November 2nd at $250, you guys would have doubled your money, you know? So I'm going to go through this really quickly as well for you. So let's say you have um, an expanding diagonal like that, right? Expanding diagonal. You're also going to have expanding diagonals for waves inside of it, right? Just, just basically something like that as well. You know what I mean? So that, that's how I would normally think of it. So you're going to get waves, or this one's a little bit off. You're going to get something like that, right? You're going to get an expanding diagonal like that. And this might end up touching down there again. And this one here... Well, you'll get another expanding diagonal like that inside of it. So these patterns to me are super profitable to play. And as we can see, um, let's say we zoomed out on the big picture here. So let's, you know, you guys see this huge diagonal in here, I'm sure. Like that, right? And now if I chose a different color, for example, pink, pretty in pink. You guys also see this particular shape right there inside of it, right? And that's what I'm referring to. But it busted out of there and it made it busted out of there 
which usually is typical for it to happen, and then it'll make a huge extended fifth wave. And um, yeah, so we're definitely reaching some all-time highs. People are taking profit there. I, I probably expected to make another touch or so down over here in a little bit. Notice that every time, actually, sorry, not it probably won't touch there, but I do think that it's going to shoot for there eventually. And we're going to try to rationalize some targets, okay? So let's get to that right now. I'm just going to delete this. It's a little bit too bright to notice, right? So where are we right now in the substructure, guys? We are in the first wave only. That is that is it. So I might not be drawing my Elliott wave here entirely accurate, but it's pretty accurate, I'd say. One, it's two there, three there, four there, and five up there like that right now. So just based on here, we might even get another touch down over here, guys. Right. So if this one made it pretty much, you know, two thirds two-thirds all the way up to the contract or expanding diagonal, we might get another touch here. But the point is, this acts as a very, very, very strong support right now overall. This this one right here that we see, right? Acts as a major, major support. But I'm going to draw a little bit better. I'm going to draw it to over here because it touches more relevant points. That's more satisfactory to me. Yeah, that's a lot more satisfactory to me. There we go. So it, it might not even touch it, actually. It might not even touch it because this one had so much strength already. And we're now working on basically the final wave, which is quite amazing, right? So where are we at? So let's take a look at this, for example. This is one of my favorite patterns to play. And this is why I was pointing it out in my previous videos there, right? So let's just say we didn't include the wick. Not too sure we'll include the wick. Nah, we're not going to include it. Just like that, right here. Cool? So now let's take two base points as a reference. One will be this one right here. That includes this long wick there, or the long candle. And a second one, I will choose these relevant points over here, where the bigger one is, right around there. It should probably average the distance right around there where we find resistance and bam see this area right here is where we would find resistance is kind of the average of the inside versus the outside and that's why we're getting resistance here right now so that's a good way as well to just give a get a general gauge of it so let's say i did my fibonacci extension okay from wave two three to four right here so if I did a one-to-one -one here, just assuming it'll do a one-to-one -one ratio, guys. One-to-one um, -one ratio. Whoa, $620. That's so crazy. Wow. I'm taking a step back right now because I'm just looking at the, the profit, right? So now I'm going to change it to there now that we got a good base range. Actually, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be more conservative, and I'll take the lower point of B right here. So I take the lower point of B. I'm now going to assume it's going to hit somewhere around $550 maybe, $550 all the way to way up there. Dash is, um, I'm not going to get into the fundamentals, but they, they have a lot going on right now, guys. They have lots and lots going on. So one possible touch point is there. Another one could even be all the way up to here if it does a massive 618 extension. So my target is going to be basically right in here somewhere we'll say yeah that's definitely going to be my target range yeah oh yeah that's definitely going to be my target range so one two three four this is made in the abc three yeah that that seems to fit my criteria pretty well for elliott wave definitely okay so now what's important is this entire area we have to take a look at it first it's a slightly oversold right now slightly oversold but it's actually only made its first bounce up there notice right here notice right here we have one peak we have two peak not three peaks right usually it'll just do like three massive peaks up there we're only at the first one so i expect some sort of consolidation or some major push very soon on the daily even um let's take a look on other time frames yeah we're rounding out already see we're getting ready for a massive push forward already do you guys see that so these are one of my favorite patterns to play as well, right? I'll take this whole thing here, just like that. 
and this is going to break out in the next very soon guys like very very soon we're talking about in hours or days here that's why i wanted to get this video out right away it's pretty big right you guys can see that consolidating in there already you can see it as a flag if you'd like like you know you can see it as a flag you can see it however you want either way it's a consolidation that's getting ready and it's priming right now to break out to the upside which is um pretty exciting in general yeah it's pretty exciting so here this is like these are some weird waves what I think is going on is this is probably one it's probably two somewhere here we'll say three is right here actually no three is somewhere way up there and four and then inside of this one we have a few sub waves we have say you know one there Let's say we'll have two there we have three there we have four somewhere right here and then it's just getting ready to do its fifth touch right now and then after that it's probably going to correct heavily it's land somewhere back to almost even here and then finally start making its way up to somewhere in this area up there does that make sense guys so the wave that we're on right now is we're on wave three still right because we have one two three this is four and we're just about to finish the fifth wave right now okay we're just about to finish this fifth fifth wave we'll call that four or something right there all right make sense i hope so okay i'm gonna do that again just in case it was it was um i went a little bit too fast i think i went even too fast for myself there one two three somewhere way up there we'll call it right or this could even be one two three four like this could even be you know either way it works out one two three this could be four and then we get one more big push up there so regardless of how we see it there's still one more wave in the process if we go to a different time frame such as this one here it looks a lot better right it looks a lot better where we just take the first highest major point there and there are a lot of sub waves and fractal waves inside of here so this will be two that could be three i don't see a fifth wave do you guys i definitely do not see a fifth wave at all anywhere i just see consolidation right here some might argue this one's it right there so i'll zoom in a little bit closer and take a look nah that's not it i would see this as basically you know one and then a big consolidation and two three four five that makes the third wave there and then now we start the four so this one's a, a really weird pattern as well right it's a super weird pattern this is basically like an ending like our leading fifth wave you can call it or sorry leading first wave so these are some complicated patterns that dash is definitely making right now but either way they absolutely fit my criteria of elliott waves and doesn't matter what time frame i zoom in on right i'm still seeing five wa uh, three waves because if this one was two there two consolidation we have one there two here three four and then five right we have the five waves of the four yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense to me so this is going to break out sometime right in here now we're just going to get a gauge of fibonacci we're going to use our fibonacci extension tool right here i think i've been a little bit overworked in the past few days i am um, i've been playing some massive positions right with iota with some massive positions with um eos as well and with um ripple and with etp and i've been getting outside of my comfort zone a little bit in terms of um you know not playing small positions usually i believe in lots of small positions and making gains fast right so you guys have seen my tweets before where i'll do one to three percent profits many many times a day on you know three three to five thousand dollar positions but um i've been really dedicated to making these videos because i want people to also have the same opportunities that i have and i want to be able to share what's on my mind through videos you know and you know these videos they don't they don't make a lot of money like someone private messaged me before and they said i'm only making these youtube videos for the monetization it's like oh come on i'm making two dollars a video on monetization when people are watching it it's honestly nothing compared to trading at all and um and it, yes it does take time right but 
the reason I'm getting into all of this is because I'm taking a step back from day trading very, very heavily and playing pretty much every single bounce that I could on the 3 to the 5 to the 10 to the 15 minute chart. And now my main focus is to also let people get in on my trades. That's why you guys will see a lot of my risk to rewards uh, videos, right? where I'm going over scenarios, where I'm actually writing it out, where I'm explaining it for you guys, where I'm also doing the flip a coin scenario, where I'm posting it on Steemit for the people that are visual learners and they would rather read it. And um, that's why I'm making these videos and going into lots of detail about my train of thought. I, I really do want to help out the community and that's my genuine uh, goal right now. Um, I don't really get a lot out of it in terms of money-wise, right, to make these videos. They cost nothing. Steam it, you know, it's more so just for the principle. I just like to see myself get a quarter here and there, whatever it adds up, you know. Um, it's But, you know, can you compare that to my day trading positions of making 1%, 2% gains of five ten thousand dollars $10,000 positions? And those, it's obviously doesn't even come close to it, right? And um, And yeah, so that's why I'm making these videos and that's why I'm not tweeting as much about my specific positions because let's face it like people can't keep up with um with the way i'm tweeting them the positions are so fast and so precise where you need to enter it it doesn't give people ample amount of time to react to it right i mean i'm tweeting a position two minutes later and the position is done already and i'm i made my one two percent and the people that read it two three minutes late they might have joined it as well but hey the opportunity is over whereas if i'm doing this for everyone where they can see it clearly, can hear me also rationalize my thoughts out loud, write out the actual setups, give people a lot of time to react and accumulate and make decisions and do their own technical analysis as well, then it's gonna provide a much better basis and foundation for people to make these informed decisions whether they wanna go in or not. Not only that, I don't recommend day trading heavily the way I do at all. And this goes nothing against anyone. Um, you know, we're all in, on different levels, right, of trading. I'm, I'm sure there's lots of people who are amazing traders out there that are that are way better than me on, in, on my Twitter that follow me. And, and I appreciate all the people that are amazingly talented. They give me a lot of advice as well, and I'm learning and growing from them. But I don't recommend scalping the way I do, guys. And you pl please understand that, that I don't recommend scalping whatsoever the way I do, because it requires a lot more knowledge um, and and extreme amount of timing and level two intuition most of the trades that i make they're they're split second base right and um and sometimes a trade can only last for two three minutes so i would recommend to look on the higher time frames like how i'm doing now right i'm on a 45 minute time frame i'll be looking at two and four hour time frames for you guys so you can just take it easy and and don't have to worry about you know playing every single like little tiny tiny bounce in there this way you guys are going to have lots of time to react, okay? So this is why I'm doing these videos in this type of manner. And I want to make sure that you guys have lots of time once again and just digest all this information. Def definitely never go and rush into anything before completely understanding it, right? You guys see my tweets there. It's like, oh no, Philicon's going to a trade. I got to go in. And I just don't want to see people lose money over time because, well, I don't want to worry about people like that, right? I'm doing this to help out the community and I want to make sure you guys really understand the process before we head into more complicated things, guys. And I promise you, we're going to learn Elliott Wave soon too. I apologize if that was a really long speech. Sometimes I give a lot of speeches, guys. I give speeches to my dog all the time too. She just sits there and she just looks at me and she looks super duper cute. And I just wonder what she's wondering and she's probably wondering what the heck I'm saying. It's like, oh, what? You don't even speak doggy? That's probably what she's thinking. And I'm like, well, what the heck? You don't speak human, little Luna? What's wrong with you? So that is my soliloquy. And now we are gonna, we're gonna do this, guys, okay? So one, two, three, four, five right there. So now this is going to, regardless if I count it right or wrong, this is what I'm going to like basically take my chance on, right? So like what, what I'm concerned about is if I counted it wrong, right? And there's actually one more wave. And the reason why I could have counted it wrong is if this, it's around here is, you know, one somewhere, two, and this is actually all of three where that make, made an extended third wave, which doesn't really happen often. So extended third waves don't really happen often extended fifth waves happen often, so I'm led to believe that this right here has got to be it. Do you guys agree with me, or, or am I going crazy? Because I'm really doubting myself for this video, um, and that doesn't really happen a lot. Usually I'm very, very confident, 
but I'm doubting myself for this particular video here for some reason. So yeah, so now I'm thinking that there's going to be five waves up here from this breakout, which is assume it's right there, two, three, four, and then five, make our way up there. And what I think is the first wave alone will be the same magnitude as that wedge. And this is going to happen, guys. Like wedges are pretty powerful things, as you've seen me demonstrate, right? They're amazing. So I think that this first target right there will basically be, don't mind the date ever. The dates are usually wrong because I don't really factor in um, dates or do any calculations for that because I'm more of a price action kind of trader, okay? So if that was like something like that, you know, we're, we're going to be peeking at it here now. Um, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, that does look good to me. So this is my level right here. One to one. Yeah, wow, that's so nice actually. One to one ratio right here is where it's going to end up. Looks like it's going to have a small fifth wave. You know what? I'm actually going to under gauge it. I don't like the way this is looking right here. I'm going to take the base range of this specific wedge here instead like that as my first wave. This, this, These two cancel each other, okay? I'm going to show you what I mean by cancel each other. We just see a long wick on higher time frames. Watch. Watch on a daily what it's going to look like. It's just going to look like a wick. Oh no, it didn't even show it yet. Huh, that's, that's really odd. Um, but what I'm getting to is, let me draw it out just so it'll make a lot of sense here. Let's so say you had a green candle there, and then you had a red candle like this one right next to it. The way they're, they should be interpreted is like this, right? Because a green one goes up and up and up, and then the next one, red one, comes down, down, down. Just think of like a little airplane, Wee like that, okay? So what ends up happening only is the wick is shown, that's it, at the base. And that's it. So those two actually cancel each other out to me. And they should only show a wick on other time frames, like where three is. I don't know why it's not showing it like that. Probably because there's a bunch of different candles intersecting it right now as well. So that's how that's how wicks are and candles are. So yeah, check it out on YouTube if you guys would like to as well. And it's also part of my candlestick analysis. So what I'm going to assume is the first wave right here will be a breakout about this size. As soon as we get to this end part, people are slowly accumulating right now, okay? So let's assume that this first wave is only of this magnitude instead. And here we're gonna slightly go back to almost where the buy region is but not really quite yet. And then this third wave or third wave will probably be a lot bigger than that. Something like that. So once again, ignore the time guys. And there we go. That's my prediction right there. And we're finding support already. If you guys have noticed, okay, we're finding bearish divergence or bullish divergence already right there. We're also getting support from what I see, right? This whole area is basically support, right? This whole area is support. We're not that we're not at all getting to the bearish side. I mean, look at that. If this was bearish, we would have crossed this zone already. Do you guys remember my RSI rule? RSI rule is about above 40, right? Here it peaked down a little bit because it was during correction, right? So that's how we can confirm that this is the correction phase right there. It peaks out of my resistance, RSI under 40 rule. Now we're staying well above it, even on a very high time frame. If this was bearish, we would actually see this RSI, you know, come down to even 30-ish range, right? But because the sentiment for Dash, I, I, I've read a little bit about it. I don't know a lot going on right now, but I'm um, just reading a bunch of things going on right now that there's lots of fundamental news that's driving it. And to me, as a technical trader, it reflects in the price action, right? I see it in these big green candles, and I don't even need to check up the news, honestly, guys. I don't need to check up the news at all. So one thing you guys have to remember about a fundament, fundamental analyst who doesn't really look at charts is that they don't know when the bottom is. They don't know when the top is, right? They'll just basically just sell or buy. 
based on news. But the thing about technical analysts is that we can see the bottom and the top, right? Not that it's better in any way. I mean, there's there's um, the, the best of both worlds, right? That's what we should usually do. So a fundamental analyst might even just read news a little bit late and he'll just buy here and then he'll just hold long term, right? A fundamental analyst can't day trade. They can't really swing trade either. They're going to be more so investors. Whereas a technical analyst like myself, what we will do is we will look at multiple time frames and find confluence and we might profit um, throughout the days or throughout the weeks as well, in addition to long term as well. So this is where it stands, guys. Right now, this is the buy zone. I'm going to go type it out for you, okay? I'll be right back. Alrighty, I am back guys. So the risk to reward setup is actually crazy just based on all the extrapolation that I've done. And um, I just want to be clear about something with my disclaimer that I wrote on Twitter, right guys? Um, the way I trade is very differently than the way what um, other people trade, right? I manage my risk and I micromanage it. And I keep emphasizing that over time. That I trade it like a casino where I'm going to keep playing games, but I will try to win it over time by using probability, right? So that's why I use these risk to reward examples here, just flipping a coin. So this risk to reward is actually 5.17, which is st stupidly amazing. So over 10 games with a risk to reward of 517, if you lost 30%, or sorry, you won 30%, but you lost 70% of the time, each win is equal to $517. Each loss is equal to $100. So three wins at... Um, so, yeah, three wins at $517, I meant to write. $517 is equal to 1,551. Seven losses at $100 each is $700. So your profit is this number minus that number, which is equal to $851, right? That's pretty big. So that's the risk to reward setup right there. Risk to reward 517. Entry is between, in this green box, that's a buy area right now where it's squeezing and it looks like it's going to break out by tomorrow at 1 p.m., which is in about 20 hours. Your entry is 410 to 425. Your target is 582. 582 is not that not that bad of a target at all, guys. I mean, we got to make a third touch on there. You guys got to remember that, okay? So 582 is a really good target based on all extrapolation that we've done as well probability 6 to 65 percent now these probability calculations i won't get into too much but i assign a metric value system and i weigh them right i weigh it based on my interpretations of elliott wave and just based on success rates in the past as well right so they're very weighted values that i use and it's a very complicated um, calculation that i use i created these formulas myself and um yeah, I couldn't even begin to explain it to someone because it's, it's all math and engineering crap that I've learned in the past before. So so this is a chance to gain 38%. I'm not saying you guys couldn't explain it, but it's something I'm not even going to dive into. Um, and I also just round it up as well to, um, it's a combination of those weighted values with my gut as well, right? With my gut and my personal experience. So the chance to gain, guys, is 38%. You put in $1,000 in 8 to 17 Eight to 13 days you got a chance to win that much okay you also have a chance to lose 7.35 percent i want to be clear now we always trade it like a casino guys right when i say that i mean we try to profit over time so it doesn't matter if you guys lose one trade two trade three trades four trades it doesn't matter at all guys all that matters is that you win over time all right so those that enter a trade and they are always expecting to win and they cannot accept or handle a loss well you guys need to really grow out of that comfort zone okay or that anxious anxiety kind of level zone and realize that we will take losses but we try to m minimize these losses with stop losses and then we try to maximize our profits over time by making sure that we stick to simple little formulas like this one right here i call it a simple little formula because it makes sense right Every single trade I go into, I write this out even for myself as well, actually, okay? I'd be lying if I if I said I didn't write it for myself. I write all these out for myself as well, and now I'm sharing it with you guys because I would like you to understand how traders will manage their risk, and this is how we manage our risk. We, have, we don't just buy and go into a trade because we see that it's going up, okay? That is the worst way to trade. We plan well ahead of time. And if you guys have noticed right now, how, how far ahead do I plan, right? I plan so far ahead by evaluating these charts 
and I break it down as a technical analyst. And then when I get a very, very good decision that's being made, when I have um, a risk to reward ratio that I'm happy with, I'm gonna enter it no matter what, right? So this risk to reward, it could you guys could even exit here if you want, right? One to eight one. I'm taking a shot in the dark here and I'm really going far there. So this is my chart guys. And I hope that you guys join the trade with me. If you do, make sure you absolutely stick to your stop losses, all right? So if you enjoyed this video, like it, subscribe to it, upload it on Steemit. If you guys made money on this trade, remember me. Buy me a beer, buy me a coffee. It goes a long way just to make me feel a little bit appreciated, you know? If you guys absolutely loved everything where you made tons of money on it and you guys wanted to donate, you guys know about my little dog, Luna. She's got her own cryptocurrency fund as well. Welcome to donate to that. And I do want to thank this person from the bottom of our hearts again, Luna and I, for sending us one Ethereum. That was the biggest donation that I've had to date. That's a $340 donation. And I really hope it didn't set that person back a lot you know who you are i really appreciate it once again guys and i hope you have yourselves a fantastic day and most importantly please stay profitable and i will i will yell at you guys one more time before i go stick to your stop loss guys stick to your stop losses if you don't stick to your stop losses i have a remote control right in front of me i will go there and i will spank you guys in the behind and trust me you don't want to get an asian spanking asian people I know from my parents, okay, guys, because all Asian people hit their kids, don't they? I know how to spank people really well. So have yourselves a great day, guys. I'm just kidding. I don't spank people. Have yourselves a great day.